The words that he speaks today would be your words. God, would you open our hearts, give us hearts of flesh this morning. God, would you open our eyes and our ears. God, to hear and to understand your word this morning. Amen. Mm, amen. Thanks, Carrie. What a privilege and joy to be here uh, with you to share in this worship. Uh, two weeks ago, I was with John and Natalie in uh, Congo. The service was to start at 9 a.m., and they said, uh, you can probably arrive about 9.30. I mean, you know nothing about that kind of timing of service and then start. But that's the way it worked in Congo. Uh, actually, there were, when we got there at 9.30, there were 20 people there. And when we got into the service at 10.30, further on, after about three choirs, uh, among the eight choirs that day, at 10.30, there were 1,200 people there. And the service then went till 1 o'clock. And so uh, I'm kind of in that Africa mode, if, you, if, if you're okay with that, Michelson? No? Okay, we're not. Okay, we're probably not trying to do that, but... It is great to be here and great to be. My wife, uh, Marty, is here. My mother, uh, Lucille, is here. My son, John, back there, and a uh, host of friends. It's great to be uh, with the community of faith. You are part of the mission movement of God in this world. Do you know that? You get to be part of gospel hope that's touching the world through your prayer, through the sending of people, through your giving. And it is a privilege for us to share in that. One of those countries that the covenant together as churches has had a commitment to for 75 years is the Democratic Republic of Congo. And John and Natalie um, kind of caught the vision for using part of their sabbatical to go and serve uh, alongside the, uh, the church in Congo. And so uh, John had an opportunity to uh, speak for two days each in two different communities, Bokonzo and Karawa, 250 pastors in each of those places. And uh, then he preached in, in one of the services. And then he spent another week in the mornings teaching uh, at the university that has been recently founded in uh, Epoch, Gemina area. And uh, some uh, 30, 40 students uh, were part of the master's degree program, and he taught each morning. Natalie had a chance to, uh, in one community, uh, teach uh, 12 principles over uh, some of the schools uh, in that region, and then in another area, teach uh, teachers from all of those schools, and then uh, became part of classrooms. I'd like to kind of show you what's going on for John and Natalie during this uh, sabbatical. <laughs> This is the Technical Institute of Bokele Ali at EPOC. Today is a test day for them, but Natalie's going to address them uh, and talk about how to stay calm while taking a test. Je sais que mon accent c'est un peu difficile et euh, la Madame Hélène va le traduire. C'est ce que je vais euh, vous parler. Oui. 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 The emblem for the Ubangi Protestant University. We're going to interrupt John's class just to film a little bit. Our education. Et je vais vous rappeler quelque chose qui est étudié, ce n'est pas quelque chose qui met fin avec notre éducation. The best leaders are lifelong learners. Donc, des bons leaders étudient toute la vie. Ok, très bien. Bon, tout le monde, bon amitié. Bon amitié, le quoi la vie non? Pe a sepeni goya vota la vino, 
Et conseillère n'a vu surtout bête avec ma boko. Isn't that great? They are truly being servants of Christ and uh, touched many lives over those couple of weeks that they were there in Congo. And, and that just kind of ripple effect of teaching those who will teach, who will teach others, and that uh, continues to go on. You know, the country of Congo is one that has been suffering uh, for many years. Uh, it, it is a country that um, is invisible to most of, of the world. It doesn't ha is not in the center of the uh, news each day, as it might be based on the kinds of issues and, and uh, devastation that's experienced there. But it has not been invisible to the Covenant Church. Uh, we've had up to 60 missionaries there at one time, and and part of a holistic mission of God in, in that community. And so what people experience and suffer in that place has gripped us deeply. And that, uh, that touch on our hearts has, has been uh, part of what has also uh, disturbed us, that despite the, the fact that God has done powerful things to raise up uh, an army of people, uh, 1,600 churches, uh, 234,000 members, over a million people attending Covenant churches there with uh, schools for 65,000. The, the, the difficulties and the struggles from a period of war, from especially 96 to 2003, continue to have an impact in that area. And the, the devastation from the looting and from the, the, uh, the, the ways in which uh, uh, lives were taken and uh, the, the struggle has gone on. I've been there now 11 times over the last nine years, and the progress is so slow in terms of transformation of communities. And we have just sensed deeply the call of God that what, what is it, God, that you would like us to do? What is it that we could come together as a body of Christ to do in this, uh, in this country, as you'll see, 187th, out of 187 countries in the Human Development Index. And so we approached, uh, as a covenant, we approached World Vision International and said, is there a, a, any way that we could partner and bring together the capacities of many and, and leverage those for a greater good of transforming a whole system in, a, in communities in Congo? How can we do something bigger and better together? That also has led to, last week I had meetings with the International Director of Opportunity International, and because World Vision is now involved in this, and, and we are involved in this, there's a new partnership forming uh, around a potential banking and savings program in that region as we go into the future. But let me show you uh, what we believe is one of the most significant things that can happen in this most desperate place, that God is gonna be glorified as lives are, tran are transformed, as they're changed. An important biblical principle is this. Hope shows up when people who care show up. Hope has been showing up in the remote Ecuador province of Congo for more than 75 years through the covenant, beginning with Dr. Titus Johnson in 1937. Today, the Congo Covenant Church, known as the CEUM, is a vibrant, growing network of 1,600 congregations, five hospitals, 90 medical clinics, and a school system serving some 60,000 students. 
The vitality and extent of what has developed over 75 years is impressive and critically important to the whole region. And yet hope is fragile in this area of desperate need. Life in the Congo is tough, really tough. Indeed, the United Nations rates Congo dead last on the latest Human Development Index, 187th of 187 countries. Deep needs exist in this deceptively beautiful country. This is Yonge Vavali. He tragically lost a leg after falling from a tree while picking fruit. He and his wife must do all they can just to survive. They travel to two meager family garden plots for their basic food supply. Getting to one of those plots requires walking more than seven miles. They harvest what they can from sometimes stingy fields. Even when the plots are producing, they don't always provide the right nutritional balance for their six children. Children in Congo face malnutrition rates three times higher than the rest of the world. <laughs> And even if there is excess to the harvest, there are few passable roads to sell produce at market. No matter how hard Yange works in the fields and at his home sewing business, it simply isn't enough to support all of their needs. They eat only one meal a day. The family makes several trips to gather water, but it is unclean and can cause cholera, typhoid, and other waterborne illnesses. Less than 6% of the population here has access to clean water. Though they dream of sending all of their children to school, they can afford to send just one son to a thatch roof school that isn't operational during the rainy season and where classes are overcrowded and materials are in short supply. As you can see, I'm feeling pity for myself, and I'm tired of this life, really. I'm working too hard in the field, and now I'm not feeling like a human being, so I don't know what I can do, really. But a new window of possibility is opening to the people of the Ecuador province. They are ready to dream again. That dreaming has led to an unprecedented partnership of unparalleled opportunity. The Covenant Church in Congo, the Covenant here, and World Vision have dreamed together and dared to ask, what might happen if we really acted like the body of Christ, joined forces and pulled out all the stops to create a radically different future for the children of Congo and their communities? The result, Covenant Kids Congo, powered by World Vision. I believe that uh, this partnership will uh, bring a, a big revival within our community in the sense that uh, the way we will do things will be different than we, what we used to do before. We will be better if we are really living together. In addition to the spiritual work of the congregations, this revolutionary partnership will bring community-identified initiatives around clean water, nutrition, education, health, and micro-enterprise skills, all the while developing Congolese leadership for replicating these efforts throughout Ecuador. I see that um, sponsorship does work. I mean, it, you may be sponsoring a child, but the entire family and the entire community get blessed. There's going to be a massive difference that a person can make, a pastor can make, a church can make by being involved in this partnership. Marta Klein, a physician's assistant from Kansas, serving for two years in the area's main hospital, understands the importance of this partnership. Yes, she has a severe form of malaria and... Okay, yeah. She has the anemic, uh, anemia along with malaria. In this rain-soaked land, malaria most often fills the beds of the pediatric ward, attacking children already fragile from malnutrition, anemia, and other effects of poverty. Adding to the difficulty, electricity, water, and much-needed medicines are frequently in short supply here. The last couple of weeks, we've been averaging about 15 kids per day in the pediatrics ward. And last week, we had at least five kids die 
Um, I know of two that died on my duty shift last week. So um, five out of 15, that's you know, 30% or so. So um, it happens a lot here. Just minutes after the team's visit to this pediatric ward where Marta works, an 18-month-old boy passed away from malaria and its complications. The team was devastated. This is real. I weep for the children who are on the edge of life and death. It's not their fault. And they have no power to get beyond that edge to safety. They're vulnerable, they're invisible, and God calls us, calls us to the least of these. Together, we can save the lives of children, give them life in all its fullness. Together, we can impact the future of this country that God has placed in our hearts for so long, that we love, that God loves. Yes, hope does show up when people who care show up. Show up now for these kids. Covenant Kids Congo, powered by World Vision. And Jesus said, let the children come to me, for to such belongs the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you do to the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you do for me, Jesus said. That's a uh, powerful call in our life. It's a call that God gives us uh, in our community that surrounds us here to have eyes to see those who are hungry and thirsty those who are strangers, alien in the land, those who are without clothes, those who are sick, those imprisoned. Jesus telling this story, the king says, you're going to be accountable for how you care for these. You, you might honor me as king, but here's the reality. You honor me by honoring those in need. You bless me by blessing those in need, by reaching out in love and caring for those in need. Faithful discipleship, faithful following of Christ is marked by mercy and love for those in need around the world. I've never seen Jesus in the face of need more than I see in Congo. I have the privilege to be in some 25 countries. And there are many different countries of, of need, but there, there are variations of that need. Here we have a place that is rock bottom in terms of the struggle and the problem. There's an African saying, when the elephants fight, it's the grass that suffers. In the elephants of war and corruption and exploitation, of global neglect, it results in children and women trampled and suffering and dying every day. 30,000 die every month in Congo. Over the last uh, 15 years, five and a half million people have died in Congo because of war, malnutrition, uh, preventable diseases. In uh, a recent community mapping of the area where John and Natalie were serving in Gemina, 12% had access to clean water, 1% had hygienic toilets, 68% of elementary age kids attended school up to fifth grade. Of those, about 30% have access to a secondary school if there's a resource. Of the families uh, averaging 10 people in a household, the average income is about $1.07 a day. 
There are many communities where $50 a year is the average uh, income of cash. It is a place of desperation. Whatever you did for these little ones, you did for me. What does that mean in your life? What does it mean in my life? The highest mortality rate in Congo is due to malaria, respiratory illness, diarrhea, and malnutrition. Preventable diseases. Preventable and treatable diseases. On January 31st this year, uh, my grandson Drake was born to John and Stacy. And I thank you for your care and your love and your prayers. It has meant everything to them and, and to all of us. You know, Drake inspired a deep awareness in me and others. Awareness that every child is precious. Every child is precious to God. Fearfully and wonderfully made. We were inspired uh, during that time by the outpouring of prayer and, and care for one child. And we were moved by the way in which God continued to reveal himself. I was particularly touched by John's devotions that he shared with all of us that on the day, January 31st, when Drake was born, he was reading through the Proverbs and came to Proverbs 31 for the day. And in that, the first part of that proverb uh, there's a word there to King Lemuel from his mother and talks about how he should behave, how he should lead, how he should function and with temperance in his life, with concern about taking his responsibility seriously. And then in verse 8 and 9 of Proverbs 31, he read this, So speak for those who cannot speak for themselves. Speak for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of those who are destitute. Speak and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and the needy. And John dreamed and prayed that Drake would be one of those who would lift up his voice for the voiceless. That the grace and the justice of God would be extended to the most vulnerable through his offspring. On the fourth day of Drake's life, Covenant Kids Congo, powered by World Vision, was, was born in the Covenant. It was launched at the midwinter gathering of ministers and missionaries. President of the Covenant, Gary Walter, Rich Stearns, president of World Vision, the president of the Congo Covenant, and the leader of World Vision in Democratic Republic were there to sign a document. And, and as they were involved in that service saying, we're going to do this together to make a systemic change in the community for the glory of God. We're going to bring together the resources that God has put at our hand, in our hands to try to touch children's lives, to touch the most vulnerable lives. It was in that ceremony that Gary Walter uh, mentioned Drake, who was at that time at UCLA in the NICU unit. Two hours later, I was baptizing Drake. He was in his bed, surrounded by parents and grandparents and a cloud of witnesses. Baptism, pointing to Christ, the means of grace. Christ who died for us and rose in power of the resurrection that makes new life possible for all of us. And then uh, this life transitioning before our eyes. From the waters of the womb to the waters of baptism. From the arms of his mother 
to the arms of Jesus. The best care in the world did everything possible for Drake. Surrounded by prayer and as we said um, born more for heaven than earth. But you know, I've also touched the hands of these babies at the edge of life and death in Congo. I've stood at the bedside uh, praying with grieving parents and heard the wails of loss when a child dies. One community like the one I preached in two weeks ago, a thousand people in the church, 20 of their children under five years old died in one month. One of the major differences from us and our experience with care and our children, a child like Drake, is that most of these Congo children can be helped because it's preventable disease. It's conditions that shouldn't be. It's about bed nets, and it's about clean water, and it's about uh, medication that's available to them. It's about treatment programs that are adequate. It's about, it's, it's about hygienic toilets. It, it, it's cutting the problems uh, that lead to mortality in half just by one little action after another for the sake of a community. When malnutrition and anemia and malaria and respiratory illness that progresses quickly into complications are the main problems of death, those are the places that God calls us to do something for the least of these. And we do it in the name of Jesus. We can make a difference. Covenant Kids, powered by World Vision, will address those issues of water and food security, sanitation, education, medical treatment, economic opportunity, spiritual transformation. It's, it's what God has called us to somehow think of the whole person and the whole community. Don't have a truncated view of the gospel. See the gospel as touching all of life. And enter into that with the fullness of your resource. Why are we blessed? So that we can be a blessing. That started with Abraham being blessed by God. And a great nation would flow from him and he would be blessed. And he would bless all nations through his offspring. And it is our privilege to walk into that pathway of God's desire to bless so as a voice for the voiceless, I appeal to myself, I appeal to you, to the church, that without reserve we respond to the poorest of the poor, that we have eyes to see, that we have courage to enter into the struggles, not for glory of our generosity, but for the Glory of God, and as we honor and bless these little ones, we bless and honor Jesus. I believe God cares that we care. This isn't a side issue. This is a central issue in the heart of God. What will we do about it? Boldly, the covenant together is committed to raising 15,000 child sponsorships in the next three years. That's a lot. You'll have an opportunity to look at that and consider a child sponsorship for your family, for you as an individual, uh, come this October, November, December, sometime that you'll choose. But you can help make that happen for 
one child, but it will be a, a, a ch actually a, a gift that will benefit all the children in the community. The child doesn't receive the money, the family doesn't receive the money, but the benefits come to that child and family and to all those that surround. Our commitment is to the whole community, the whole area of both in the Covenant Church, the Free Church, the Catholic Church, the Revival Church, the NGOs that are working, the government programs that are working in a community, touch all of the community with the grace of God and the generosity of God's people. And over the next 15 to 20 years that we've committed to this project, it'll extend from one area to another area and reach into a whole region that God wants to transform their whole lives, spiritually, physically, and as a community, socially, economically. It's our honor and privilege to enter into that, to share in that great task and step of faith. It's a personal matter for the covenant. We've been there 75 years. People have come to a new life in Christ and, and reached out. It's a, it's a family kind of relationship that God's called us to in a unique way. Why some of the most difficult places in the world were in South Sudan and Congo? Most difficult, but somehow God has put that on our hearts. And how will we respond? For me, it's a personal matter to care and to be part of this mission together for the sake of Drake and children like him, for the sake of Danu and Kikwiti and Jules and Lily. You heard in the video, hope shows up when people who care show up. What we do for one will change the lives of many. So speak for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of those who are destitute. Speak up and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and the needy. And Jesus said, whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. What is Jesus saying to each of us? We're not intending just to have dramatic pictures or to go deep, but these are realities that children and families live with each day. How will God call us out of that place of comfort into the place of need? Pray to hope in the name of Christ and to act. You can be part of it now. You can be part of it into the future. Consider what God would call you. But back to the, back to the word that God gives. That word of accountability. If you were to be my disciple, then have eyes and hearts of compassion for the one in need. May God make us faithful and may we enter into God's joy as we share out of God's abundance in our life to bless others with life in its fullness in the name of Jesus. Amen. I think we could sit in silence for a little bit after that. Thanks for sharing your heart, Kurt, and uh, we're going to take a few moments.